This video is on the alveolar process, which is a fancy way of saying bone, and we're going to touch a little bit on cementum. So let's begin. So when I say alveolar bone, or if I say alveolar process, it means the same thing. What we're referring to is the bone that's surrounding our teeth. And so if we look at the layers of the bone, there's two layers that I want, or the actual alveolar bone is composed of two um, bone. The first one is the alveolar bone proper. The alveolar bone proper is the inner layer. So the thing that you see in white, that's your alveolar bone proper. It's the inner layer of the socket. And then everything else that we're looking at in yellow or in brown or, or beige is known as your supporting bone. So supporting bone is the bulk of the bone and alveolar bone proper is the bone that's on the that's lining the socket. So alveolar bone proper is on the inside, supporting bone is on the outside. Again when we look at the alveolar process or the alveolar bone we have the inner layer which is the alveolar bone proper and if we look at the supporting bone Okay, there's actually two types of supporting bone. The outermost one is called the compact bone and it's very dense, it's hard. The inner supporting bone is known as the cancellous, cancellous bone or the spongy bone. Okay, and that, it looks spongy, right? There's like holes or gaps in between. It takes the spongy appearance. It looks like the sponge we have at home. So again, outer bone is known as your compact bone, some people call it the cortical bone, inner bone is known as your spongy or cancellous bone. Now if we were to look at a radiograph, the white lining that you see surrounding the, um, oh, surrounding all the teeth actually, is known as your alveolar bone proper, but on a radiograph, we don't say alveolar bone proper. On a radiograph, we say lamina gyra. So lamina gyra is the white line that we're looking at right here that is outlining the socket. Again, this is the cortical or compact bone, which is the hard outer bone, and the inner or the inside bone is known as your cancellous bone or spongy bone. Okay, let's look at the alveolar crest. So alveolar crest is the peak of the bone. So if I look between two teeth, we can see a peak. And what you're going to know is that, or notice, is that your alveolar bone crest, okay, so the crest, the peak of the bone, in a healthy mouth, it is 1.2 to 1.5 millimeter below the CEJ. Or some people even, in some textbooks, this says anywhere from one to two millimeters. So remember, the CEJ is this right here, the separation, where there's a line right here separating the crown, or the cementum, and the enamel, or the crown and the root, there's a line separating that, and that's your CEJ. So the alveolar crest is just below the CEJ, and by how much? By 1.2 to 1.5 millimeter below the CEJ. What is, what is interesting to note is when you look at the posterior teeth, you're going to see that it's flat, right? The bone, the alveolar crest is more flat. But when we look at the anterior teeth, it takes more of a peak appearance. It's not as flat. It's more peaky or triangular. Okay, fenestration versus dehiscence. These are gaps in the bone. And so if you notice a hole, a window-like appearance on the apical, apical section. Apical means near the apex of the root, near the very top part. So if you see a fenestration, if you see a, a, um, a gap in the bone on near the apical side of the root, further up, then it's known as fenestration. But if you see um, bone loss in just the coronal area, so the bottom part, or in this case, the part towards the crown, so the part towards the crown, if you see a bone loss in that area, that bone loss is referred to, could be referred to as dehiscence. So fenestration is a window-like opening where you see it, the, the loss, the bone loss is near the apical part of the root. Dehiscence is near the coronal or near the crown area of the root.
What this slide is showing you over here is that there is something called Sharpie's fibers, and this is very hard, to, may not be easy to see, but the endings of the periodontal ligament fibers, okay, so the, these are the periodontal ligament fibers. Remember, periodontal ligament fibers are the ones that run across over here and attaches to cementum on one side, bone on the other. And when you look at the one that attaches, the very endings actually, that attach to the cementum and bone, they are known as Sharpie's fibers. So the very ending right here and right here, those endings are known as Sharpie's fibers. And what you're going to notice is on in the bone area, there are Sharpie's fibers, so there's periodontal ligament fibers attached, and then there's some space where there's no periodontal ligament fibers attached. And then there's fibers attached, no fibers attached, fibers attached, no fibers attached. So um, if you look at the alveolar bones, some do contain Sharpie's fibers, which are the endings of the periodontal ligament fibers. Some do not. This one don't contain any fibers. And as our teeth are, you know, moving in our socket, we could lose fibers, we could gain fibers. So the teeth um, shift and fibers can be lost, fibers can be gained in different areas of the roots. So when we look at a bone, and if we were to zoom into a bone, okay, we're going to see lots of things. So let's look at some of the things we see. The first thing that we're going to see is um, osteons. Okay, so osteon is, do you see how when you look at the bone, you can see the circular circumferential or circular type of um, bone you can see it circles it's a, it's um it's shown here in circles if you were to just like look at that circle part right here this whole part that is known as an osteon okay so that's an osteon it's the main structural unit of bone okay and it has many different layers those layers are what we call lamellae so lamellae are known as layers and so again there's lots of different layers of bone in fact when you look at bone bone is uh, deposited in layers so within the osteon so within this whole thing there's osteocyte so if we look at this we can see osteocytes which are in blue these are the cells named as that's list that's named osteocyte osteocyte is a cell that comes from osteoblasts so remember osteoblasts are cells that make bone once they enter into the bone and they're trapped in the bone it's known as osteocyte they're essentially osteoblasts they make bone okay what else do we see here what we also see is that if we just look at bone we can see there's blood vessels within the bone. So in the bone, there's blood vessels. And these blood vessels are supplying the bone, are feeding the bone, are giving nutrients to the bone. Now, if we look at some canals, we do see various canals. So what the first canal that we see is known as the Haversian canal. So the Haversian canal, it goes along the long axis of the bone. So it just goes down along the long axis of the bone. There is a bone that is um, stemming out of the Haversian canal and that is known as the Volkmann's canal. The Volkmann ca Volkmann's canal stems out of the Haversian canal. And if we were to look at a better picture, what you're going to see here is that the Haversian canal is the one that goes down like this. Okay, and what they do is um, they carry blood vessels and nerves, while the Volkmann Volkmann's canal, that's the one that connects the two Canal. So the Haversian canal is connected by the Volkmann's canal. So the Volkmann's canal is going across, whereas the Haversian canal is going down, towards like it's going along the long axis of the bone. And now, if we were to look at the bone anatomy, if we were to zoom into the bone, and more importantly, into the spongy area of the bone. When you look into the spongy area of the bone, you're going to see lots of rods. It, it looks like this, these like um, bony like structure that looks like rods. And those rods are known as trabeculae. So trabeculae are those stems, those rods that stick out within the spaces in the bone. There's also bone marrow that's found inside the bone. Bone marrow is found within the spaces in the bone. So in the bone, there's spaces. And what bone marrow looks like is actually um, like a jam or jelly-like substance. It's a spongy, soft tissue substance. And it comes in two colors. It comes in yellow. It comes in red. So um, this is yellow bone marrow. This is red bone marrow. And um, the yellow bone marrow has like fat tissue. The red one has like all the uh, cells, the red blood cells and white blood cells. 
um, which make our blood. So within those bone, bone marrow, what we can see what we find are stem cells. And stem cells are like bodies of raw, fresh material. They're fresh cells that just, um, that are formed inside the bone marrow. And these, they say that these stem cells can help our health in the future in many ways through many new treatments. What they're saying, researchers, what they're saying is that the stem cells, um, can make, eventually can make or help create new tissue. So for example, if I have a heart disease, um, what they could do is they could take stem cells and put it into a lab and uh, you know make it the perfect cells that we want and then yeah, transplant them into my damaged heart, for example. So the stem cells, there's like growing research on this. It's a huge new thing that's out there. Um, what I want you to know is stem cells are found within the bone marrow and bone marrow is found within the bone to be more specific, it's found within the spaces, within the cavities of the bone. When I say cavity, I mean space, within the cavities or spaces of the bone. Okay, remember how I said the periodontal ligament fibers are attached from the, on the bone on one side and cementum on the other side? So we can see here the cemental support. Well, that's referring to are that the fibers are attached to the cementum. Now, interestingly enough, cementum can resorb. Cementum can be eaten away, um, but bone gets resorbed faster than cementum. So if we have to compare bone and cementum, bone goes away faster or more fast compared to cementum. <clears throat> And the reason why they say this is, is because the bone has blood vessels in them, right? If we look at the bone, you can see there's blood vessels in there. So blood vessels are trying to keep the bone alive. But the cementum doesn't have any blood vessels, doesn't have any nerves. There's no blood supply or nerve supply in the cementum. And that's why they say that it can resorb, um, but it is less likely to resorb because there's no bone or, uh, sorry, there's no um, nerve or blood supply in cementum. Okay, let's look at how the, how our tooth move. So we're going to look at physiological and orthodontic. So this is mixed dentition, right? We can see the permanent teeth right here, primary dentition over here. And what this slide is saying is that our bone, our alveolar process, or our, our alveolar bone, it's going to grow. It's going to grow um, in many different directions to accommodate the permanent teeth right because permanent teeth when they grow in they gotta fit in there somehow so the bone is going to grow to accommodate our permanent um, incisors our permanent molars now let's look at some terms over here during the mixed dentition stage which is between eight years to 12 years what happens is there could there's lots of different things that could happen there's the leeway space which we talked about so the leeway space is the size difference between the permanent molar and the primary molar. So the gap, the space in here, here's the permanent premolar coming in. That space between the first permanent molar and the primary teeth, or the erupting permanent teeth, that space is known as the leeway space. So that space will occur when the, they lose their uh, primary teeth. There's also another thing called incisor liability factor, which is basically the difference in space between the permanent incisors and the primary incisors. So um, if you had to measure the difference in the space, that measurement is known as your incisor liability. So it's the difference in space be available um, between the primary incisors and permanent incisors. And lastly, mesial drift. Mesial drift is whenever um, a tooth gets lost. So we can see here a tooth has been lost over here. The adjacent uh, tooth tends to drift mesially because there's nothing here um, holding it back. So it's going to automatically drift mesially, drift towards the midline of the face. This happens when we have tooth loss. It also happens during hyper eruption when a tooth is hyper erupted, supra erupted, when it goes down. You know when this happens? When there is no um, opposing tooth at the bottom. If there's no opposing tooth at the bottom um, that's sitting there perfectly, it will supra erupt, it will hyper erupt, it will fall down because of gravity, right? Gravity kicks over and then this tooth hyper erupts or supra erupts. So mesial drift is when the tooth shifts or drifts mesially. All right, let's look at what happens during orthodontic or when we're in braces, what happens then? So during the orthodontic period, what orthodontists are trying to do is shift our teeth into its proper place. 
And so as the teeth are shifting, what's happening is bone is getting resorbed over here. So these are osteoclasts that's eating away the bone so that this tooth can move forward. And then it's going to rebuild the bone here. So whatever bone is lost, they're going to put osteoblast over here cells that are making more bone. So bone resorption does take place. Bone does get resorbed. Why? To allow the tooth to move to its appropriate direction. Now when the compression is too great, when the ligament, remember we have periodontal ligament fibers here, when it is compressed too tightly, okay, too, so when it's compressed really tight, hyalinization occurs. What hyalinization means is that the periodontal ligament fibers become colorless. There's no color in them. And so this occurs when, and you can see this, so this is um, the periodontal ligament fibers um, area here, the color is kind of gone. You can see lots of empty spaces when there is no high analyzation. <laughs> I can't even say the word. So when there's no high analyzation, then what happens is that the periodontal ligament fibers are still there. It's not colorless at all. But here you can see it is, uh, there's, it, it's not as it should be. So when compression is too great, when the periodontal ligament fibers are, are getting squeezed too, too much, high analyzation, can occur, which is when the periodontal ligament fibers aren't as strong, and which is when um, there's l lack of color in the periodontal ligament fibers. It's colorless. Okay, let's talk about what happens to the bone when we age. So when we age, if you look at the alveolar bone, this is actually the alveolar bone proper, which is the lining of the root. Okay, so the lining of the socket. This is the root, and right uh, this is the bone that's lining the socket. Notice how it's scalloped. That's what happens when we get older. The sockets, or the alveolar bone proper, have rough, jagged walls. And that's what we see here. It's not smooth like it used to be. It's now jagged. There's less fiber bundles. There's less um, periodontal ligament fibers that are attached in between the cementum and the bone. There's less cells in the bone as well. The cells aren't as... Um, as good anymore, it's less functioning, doesn't function as well. And then the marrow space, remember we we're talking about the bone marrow? It's now full of um, adipose tissue, full of fat cells. So there's lots of fat cells in the bone marrow. Okay, edentulous jaws basically means uh, jaws with um, no teeth. Okay, residual ridge, jaws with no teeth. And so what happens is when the teeth are extracted, the bone automatically resorbs. The bone kind of goes away. Look at the reduction in the height of the bone. So here the bone is quite, um, there's lo lots of height in the bone. And then here it's getting reduced slightly and then it gets reduced even more. So the alveolar ridge, this is called the alveolar ridge, the bone, um, it does resorb and it, it can resorb really fast. It can resorb slow. So it happens at varying rates. In fact, when if you, if you know someone that were to get a denture, when they go in, and get their dentures, they might need to get them relined a lot. And reline means they just put some additional material into the dentures so that it fits the jaw better. And the reason why they have to put additional material into the denture is because the bone keeps resorbing and resorbing, right? So we need to reline the denture, add some material to the denture so it fits really nicely. Another thing to note is that individuals with edentulous jaws, individuals with no teeth, what will happen is because the bone keeps resorbing, because the bone um, resorbs, you can see the height is reduced compared to what it used to be, it can cause wrinkling around the mouth. So I don't know if we can really see it here, but there could be wrinkling around the mouth and that could be, that is due to the, last, the, the loss or the lack of alveolar bone. Okay, thank you for listening.